Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the European Crossover Webinar. And we are still continuing to see the euro uh, a bit weaker in here. Really, a lot of all the pairs here, uh, the majors are uh, weaker. Uh, we did see the yen get above 110 and pull back. I grabbed some short there, and I actually still have a short on uh, the euro Aussie. Things down about 15 pips right now. But I... Uh, was able to get also grab some here on the dolly and we did challenge that 995 but as the s ps put paired back this opened the door for us to go in and dip i'm already out of that right now but i still have the uh year aussie we'll see what happens there um and uh, cable still remains very very weak see the pace will kind of rally back up in here um and uh Let's see, we'll also take a look at what news we have coming out. Coming up at the top of the hour, we do have a HICP final here on uh, uh, European data. We do also have leading economic indicators, kind of relatively quiet and until we get into 10 a.m. Uh, we have LEI and University of Michigan preliminary, and that's going to be it here. And then we'll take a look here on the cross rates. QEN still uh, near its lows. Uh, also, the Aussie dollar has moved higher. I'm giving this a little bit of a chance just to see. Um, really, like I said, the key thing was if we held above 62.16 on a two-hour, and actually we're doing it. We've taken this pop-up in here, so we'll see what translates. As we, it's going to be, it's relatively quiet. We do have that uh, final year uh, HICP data um, here. Uh, we're seeing also. Uh, uh, Sterling Aussie come off of its lows, but uh, Sterling Yen still pushing down here. We'll get into that. I think we said here, uh, let's see, 41.23, confluence of the 30%. So we've pushed even lower. There's some huge support just below there, but uh, we have continued to push lower here as uh, Sterling continues to remain weak. Um, <clears throat> let's go back into the main screen. Okay, great. And let's just go on and move into uh, the news and we'll get into the analysis. Europe waits Trump's move on autos. Donald Trump has until uh, Donald Trump has until Saturday to decide whether to impose tariffs on imported cars and autos from Europe and elsewhere, based on the findings of his administration that such imports are a national security threat. The decision, uh, the decision comes at a prickly time for Washington and Europe. They're already bickering over. Other commercial issues from arms trade to whether China's Huawei should be excluded from telecom infrastructure products projects. The betting, however, is that the Trump will delay the decision later today for six months to leave room for further talks from his point of view to try and keep the heat on Europe. How to respond will be in the hands of an entirely new European Commission Parliament, which should be in office by then. According to local media reports, another significant milestone in the long and winding Brexit saga is about to be reached with the imminent collapse of cross-party talks between conservatives and laborers to find a compromise. If that happens, the next step is to organize a series of test votes in Parliament to work out whether there's any Brexit formula at all, which could come close to find a majority there. In parallel, Theresa May's uh, premiership now looks to be drawing to a close after a last-ditch vote on her Brexit deal in early June. 
which he is widely expected to lose again. With George uh, Boris Johnson now publicly confirming he wants to succeed her as party leader and hence prime minister, a Johnson leadership would increase the chances of a no-deal Brexit, which this parliament has voted to exclude, so the logic would then start lurching towards a snap general election. Meanwhile, the Swiss have also decided to how far they are prepared to compromise to enjoy the benefits of a close relationship with the EU. Its voters will take part in a binding referendum on Sunday to tighten weapons ownership laws in line with EU steps to fight terrorism should be rejected. Switzerland could be excluded from agreements on the Schengen zone, which allows free travel. And into markets. Looked earlier this week, it might be entering a period of, of phony war. Markets start on a horrible note on Monday, but appear to have steadied somewhat despite Trump's action to effectively ban Chinese telcos, Hawaii, and ZTE from the U.S. This morning, tough talk by China's Communist Party newspaper suggested that the war risks are escalating. That led to a 2% uh, sell-off in Shanghai, saying Asian shares almost 1% lower the World Shares Index is flat today and looking at a weekly loss for the second week in a row, down 1.5% so far this week. Chinese Beidou, part of its uh, BAT's tech uh, cohort, has also fallen into a loss for the first time since its listing in 2005. The move was different yesterday. New York closed on a chipper road uh, after housing starts turned out to surprisingly strong and Philadelphia Fed Reserve Survey showed a manufacturing pickup. On the corporate front, Walmart reported ubby results, so it did warn trade wars would lead to higher prices. Of the S&P so far, 75% have beaten profit expectations. Um, on currencies, we saw the dollar gain, boosting its two-week highs, though it's shown some signs of pulling back the worst performing, including the sterling down 1.6% for the week, and the Aussie, which has lost 1.5%, one a victim of Brexit politics and the other of trade war rate cut expectations. The one has tanked to its lowest this year and has lost 3% this month. Dollar near two-week high on upbeat U.S. data. The dollar held near a two-week high against its peers on Friday, supported by stronger U.S. economic data and a bounce in Treasury yields. The dollar index uh, versus a basket of six major currencies to a little change at 97.80. The greenback reached a two-week uh, peak on robust U.S. housing data and weekly jobless claims report, which sustained labor market strength in the world's biggest economy. The U.S. currency has also drawn its strength as its counterparts, such as the euro were do and pound were dogged by bearish factors. The euro is weighed down as the eurozone is saddled with weakened economic fundamentals and Italian political concerns. While it's all about Brexit for the pound, said Yunichi Ishikawa, Italy's right-wing league party will tear apart the European Union rules, which is strengthening the country. If it scores well in the May 23-26 European parliamentary election, Italian Deputy Prime Minister uh, Matteo Salvini said on Thursday. Salvini challenged to U.S. Uh, fiscal rules as it been a key source on the worry on the euro, which has fallen half a percent this week. The safe haven yet has also stood to benefit from the woes in Europe and elsewhere. Fiscal risk related to Italy is a theme sure to captivate speculative market players, any resulting risk, of course, could benefit now uh, the yen not only against the euro, but against the dollar as well. The common currency was to touch lower at 122.67 euro yen, is treated to retreated half percent against the yen this week. Britain faces a politically disorderly exit from the European Union as May has struggled to keep her Brexit deal and her partnership. The dollar initially overnight had gains and popped above 110 yen, but it lost some traction. Last trade at 109.73. China may have some interest in continuing trade negotiation with the U.S. now. Bloomberg report on Friday against the safe haven uh, but yen. The greenback fell three and a half months low to 902 at the start of the week. Australian dollar stretched losses overnight and fell to a four, new four and a half month trough at 66, 68.83. The uh, Aussie suffered big losses the previous day after some soft domestic employment data, heightened expectations for an interest rate cut by the RBA. And we'll move into the analysis.
Well, the euro continues to push a little bit lower here. We're right into that support that we've had uh, <clears throat> for the last couple of days here, which is the 11.75. And we're just hanging on here. Well, the door even opens up a little bit lower. And, and if we grab a, a foothold or da uh, daily and weekly close above this 11, uh, below this 1170, it's really going to open the door for us to move lower. The euro's tried to hang on, um, but it has not been able to do much with its gains here. And the concerns also are with these elections um, that uh, really the biggest drag is with uh, Italy and the concerns that they're going to go on and cause here. So looking into today, let's see where we stand here. Beyond here is going to take us down to 11.52. Um, we're holding this area. They're try, attempting to uh, try and hold this area here. And that is key for them. Um, If they break lower, this is where they're going to find some support is going to be 11.48, 11.48. Uh, the concern is over the weekend that we could see the euro continue to slide back uh, because, um, as I said, uh, with Italy and its issues, is the one thing that's keeping the euro and dragging it down a bit here. So we're going to go with... Um, Call 1150. <laughs> And on the upside here, I'm going to come right there, 1220, 1220 for right now. If we get a pop. And this cable continues to drip lower. Um, we've already even pushed below here. There's just a touch bit of support in here. But, I mean, like I said, with all the woes that are going through with uh, the whole uh, May and situation, it certainly doesn't look good here. Um, And really, we're getting to a point where it's, now we've got a lot of good volume coming in here. Uh, let's take a look where we stand here on the two uh, on the uh, two hour chart. And I'll probably have to spin out of that uh, euro. Honestly, like I said, it's 
It's still holding up very well, and the problem is, is that I thought that we might see the Kiwi, um, not Kiwi, but the Aussie, fare a little bit better um, overnight, and we simply just have not seen it. The uh, I thought the Aussie might start to work a little bit, maybe grab a foothold above 69 cents. I don't know about the Aussie dollar, because I've kind of used that as a gauge, but you can see here it continues to remain very weak. Yeah. Um, and let's go and take a look here on the two hour on the cable. Right there. Twenty seven forty. Two. We'll go twenty-seven. Yeah, Resistance will be right there at And let's go and move into the Aussie dollar. Well, I thought we might be able to grab a little bit of a foothold above 69 cents and just try to move a little bit higher. Um, and we're simply not seeing it right now. We're just stuck near these lows. And... Um, I've given up, but the, the gains I've made here on the dollar yen overnight are uh, pretty much being not taken all the way away, but a good chunk right now as I hold a, a short euro Aussie. I thought we might be able to jump back up in here, and I've used it, and it's worked very well as far as using the Aussie dollar as a gauge. Uh, it's kind of, uh, like I said, given like a little bit of a, 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 a kind of a heads up where, where the market moves, and it quickly reacts and ends up pulling it down uh, because we already have your weak general your weakness. But um, I thought we might be able to grab and uh, push back up above 69 cents. Maybe not get very much high, but I thought we'd probably be able to make it up to about 69.30, probably enough to go in and, and push this euro oscillator, but it's not coming back down right now. And um, so now when we're looking here on the, on the, um, on the Aussie dollar itself, let's take a look here if we can see anything on the two-hour chart. Maybe a Fibonacci projection where we would find some support. But it certainly doesn't look that way. Well, there we are right there. We're right there at 161% of this most recent move here. From 70 to uh, 7205. And that puts us right here at 6879. 
and we actually touched it. So let's go with that for support, <clears throat> 6879. See if this market can try and make a little bit of a stand right there. <coughs> Excuse me. And on the upside, uh, resistance. It's going to be Well, we finally made it down here. We haven't quite, actually, we haven't quite made it here down to the 65.17 yet. And that's going to remain support here, 65.17. For today, though, uh, resistance is going to be, we're going to move it down here quite a bit, 6604. And take a look here at the dollar cad. At the beginning of the week, we were looking for lower moves here on the dollar cad. It was holding up, holding up, and finally we saw this thing uh, break lower. We got down to 33.82. Then we moved back up. Then we kind of started to slide back yesterday, and then we turned around and reversed things around here. Um, so we're still pushing up, trying to trying to make some kind of a move here. Um, let's. And really, resistance comes right back again with the dollar pushing, and we're coming into a Friday. Um, resistance goes back to our old friend here at 3504. Looking here is going to be key. We had it lower, and we actually moved lower yesterday, making a move almost all the way down to 34 cents. And then the market turned around and really uh, accelerated in the latter part of the U.S. session, and we pushed up in here. But this will be the key as we come into today's close 3504.
Support in the meantime is going to be right there at 3430. You've got some here at 50, but if the mark's going to break low, this is where it's going to make a run to. It's going to be 3430, where you find some um, support come in here. And next up is going to be the dollar peso. We came down here to go and um, retest into this trend line. We're still kind of hold, we hold just above it. But uh, the market's still been relatively trapped here. You would think that uh, with what we saw at the beginning, we would have seen this market move much higher. And then yesterday's the S&P's moved higher. Um, the market invariably moved higher. Uh, so it's been kind of a mixed bag in here. So looking for resistance and level support here. Did rally back up to the 61%. And really the resistance is going to be back up to this 1923.6, which we had before. Uh, Mark's gotten above it, but it's actually held it overall. And let's take a look here on the support would come down here to 19, Well, looking here at the dollar yen, we were able to go and get above uh, 110. Um, we did go and challenge. We talked about this in the U.S. session, how they had a real dogfight going on at 9.95, and I was my take was, God, this thing should already be above 110. It should be around in the 10 teens. So it was really putting up a dogfight. Didn't want to go above it. Following the Asian session, we did trip just to get above the 10, and then we quickly rolled over uh, and started sliding back down. So I was able to catch some of this. Now I've actually Given a decent portion of my gains back with the Euro Aussie because I thought we'd kind of dip back a little plop. Probably ended up having to spin out of this Euro Aussie. I was thinking we might just get a, a dip back into uh, um, 61, you know, 61.60s, but now we're we're holding up as the Aussie has not done very well overnight. OK, 
Okay, and let's see here. I did want to jump out of that Euro Aussie. Um, not going to start up against the Trinic on a Friday. I thought we the Euro the Aussie might be able to hold up a little bit better, but they did not. Um, resistance at this point is going to come in right there at nine eighty four. On a very short-term basis, support will come in right there at 943. Now, we know the, the pivot has held up really well, but 927, but we'll go with 943 since already made that stab up there to a bit above 10. And let's go with the cash dollar index. Well, it's all about this 9789. We've talked about this um, ad nauseum. Um, I mentioned it quite a bit yesterday in the chat room. This 97.89, which is a weekly level, it's also the 61%. If they were to grab that 97.89, boy, that really make a huge, big difference and really send this market spinning higher next week. If we're able to regain this 97.89 um, on the close. Um, now, like I said, if the year, if the dollar yen had actually uh, uh, gone above 995 during the U.S. session, that really would have tripped the stops, and we really would, would have been already above that 97.89 and zooming. Um, so it's going to be 97.89. Even though it's just a spit away, that's a huge level. Support right now is going to come in right there at 97.46.
And let's go into the cross rates. And looking here at the Kiwi Yen. Right here, next level support comes in right there at 71.64, uh, for 71.46, I mean. Um, and the bad thing is, like I said, we're coming in on a Friday uh, and I already have that there, 71.45. So no changes there. The only difference is going to be on the resistance will obviously be low in that. Right here at 7229. And moving to the euro yen support's going to be right there uh, I think we have from yesterday which is going to be right there 22 1820 we had uh 2222. Just a bit above it, right there. Actually, 2220. We had 22. Move that 2220. We're still pushing lower here. Um, and the yen strengthens and. Um, if we do make that dip, well, as I mentioned, we have the issue with Italian debt, and we may see a continued push on this. And um, resistance drops down quite a bit as we go into that into the Friday close, which is going to be 22.94. Moving into the Euro Aussie, and this thing continues to uh, pop power higher. I gave it a chance here. I was thinking that the Aussie could kind of hold its own, but um, and I thought we might be able to, uh, and then talking about the Aussie dollar could climb above 69 cents. The key here on the Euro Aussie, and I gave it a chance, um, I actually should have spun out of it already, was, um, and I posted that in the chat room since yesterday, the key was going to be 22, as long as it stayed, and I said below 22.16 on the two-hour. And you can see that right here. I'm at 62.16. came in. Right there. Here was the pullback here, okay? There's that 62.16. So really here, like I said, um, once it, if it got above 62.16, I said, as long as it stays below 62.16, it's okay. Well, we closed up in here, 62.23, but then we turned around, we dipped back down into single digits, okay? Look like, okay, well, a little bit overshoot, see what happens. And then this happened while I was sleeping right here, and now we continue to push a little bit higher. And the key thing is, is that it's on a Friday close, so, and right now, with the Aussie continue to remain weak, 
there isn't anything to, you know, we may end up pulling back some, but everything's going with the way of this trend right here. Nothing's changing now. And we, we were able to secure, as I mentioned, a two hour close above 62.16, which was key. And, um, you know, see, when we saw that run up here, we came back, we closed, the closing bar was 62.16. As long as it stayed below 62.16, and um, we got this above here, but then we turned around quickly back down onto the single digits. But then well, here's where we closed up here, and here we are still adding on here with that momentum. And Aussie is still uh, maintaining Aussie dollar a foothold below 69 cents. Resistance now, 66.22, take a look here on the daily. It's going to be right there, 62.62. This will be clear if it gets a close above 62.62. This may end up holding the market, but like I said, we're into a Friday. Uh, <clears throat> we'll see what happens, you know, as we start the week. And now if the market eventually tires down, boy, what a move this has been. Yeah, then we may go and see a correction. That correction could ultimately take us down here on first blush to, you know, almost 200 pips lower. But we'll have to see, you know, what happens here. Do we get some type of reversal here? If not, if we do... And yeah, that'd be the first first blush at look. But uh, right now, everything's going its way. And it's on a Friday. Hard to fight that momentum. Going to the Euro Kiwi. No change here, 7123 here and 7028. No change. This has been trading a very, very tight range here. Um, look at that. And on to the ASEAN. Well, right now it's trying to make a move down to that 7531. It might even get beyond that, <clears throat> especially as concerning how weak the Aussie dollar is. But I think there's a chance for this overshoot to take us down here to 7473, and that's where we're going to go with the support, 7473. We may not see that today, but good chance that we'll in time see that. So let's go with that. 7447 is 61% of this entire move. But let's go with 7473.
resistance right now. Um, this resistance held across here, the 7560, but resistance right now uh, <clears throat> is going to be right there at 7574. This is actually working as support. Now it's working. You can see here's resistance. Um, we'll have to move that higher here. 7594. 7594. <clears throat> uh, we'll say this market looks bound and determined to get down here to the seventy four seventy three. there with Aussie remain the week may start the week and we're still making new lows here in the Aussie and I'm talking about Aussie dollar let's go into the sterling yen And this market has just been dropping and dropping and dropping just without any type of a respite. Um, this is some very good support. And I remember seeing this about, oh, about a week and a half ago or so. And I was like, boy, if it'll get down there, that's very, very good support. I don't know if it will. And look at this here. This 39.95 is pretty huge. Now, that may not be the, the low, but I tell you what, it's pretty doggone close. All this, there's a dip below here, which goes to 39.56. But this whole area is going to be a good area here. Between 55, they're basically called 39.50 to uh, 39.95. Um, so we'll see what happens there. I mean, the, the sterling has been beat up pretty well. And you can see here, um, really opened the door for us uh, from before it. That's this market. It was really trying to hold on. And one last blip, we turned around and gave it up. And boy, it's just been downhill since then. We're going to go with that uh, 39.95. Um, it's actually a dip just below that. Let's go. Let's call it. Oh, that's it. Does it miss that 39.50? Um, so it touches just below that. We'll go with 39.76, 39.76, but that 39.95 is key area. This whole 39.50 to 39.95, 40 is going to be very, very key. We'll go with 39.76. Resistance will be 4085. And let's go into starting odd.
Resistance is going to be right there at 86.12. And support right now is going to be right there at 8534. There's a bias chart for today. Um, we're still seeing, look at this ear Aussie still pushing all these Aussie pairs. Uh, we're going into the main screen. Um, look at this Aussie dollar. No reprieve, and obviously, I mean, I'm, to be quite honest, I'm surprised the euro Aussie isn't even pushing even higher. And like I said, I thought we might be able to <clears throat> hold and get a little bit of a foothold, not a whole lot. I was only looking for about a move up to around here, 69.30, uh, 33, and I thought that might translate in the euro to probably about a move down to about, uh, you know, 61.60s. Uh, but, uh, you know, like I said, this Aussie is just not holding up at all and just pushing even further uh, now, key on the Aussie dollar on the way up, Euro Aussie is going to be the 6262. Uh, that'd be the resistance on that one. But uh, you can see this is not doing well at all here. I'll get the bias chart posted. And thanks for joining here on the European Crossover Webinar.